guys, welcome back to Backyard Build. I'm Charlie, I'm his sister, and I just wanted to do the intro for them. Um, but I just want to say, you guys should get their merch. This is the front of the shirt, that's the back. We they also have backyard also builds. Also have backyard builds, shirt, jumpers. So you guys should go get one. They do sticker packs. You should also do that. But don't forget to like this video and subscribe to their channel so you can see when they post. So on this episode, we're going to actually start building parts for Charlie's formal car. Yes. She's going in the wagon if it gets finished. But this episode, we build the nine inch. Enjoy! So what I've got here is a piece of 180 PFC, so it's like a structural channel, so it's 8 mil thick, so two flanges. So what we're going to do is drill and tap some holes through this face, and I've Tom's actually cut me some uprights, um, which will bolt down, so then the diff can actually bolt in there and we'll go through that process. So, gonna mark it out. Fine, so now this bit's a bit long. I only really need it like 16, 1700. So probably we'll cut it down. But I'll work off one edge as a datum so we can cut it out later because my saw's not big enough. Um, it's been designed to be like universal for diffs, so Borg Warner as well. Um, so yeah, just gonna drill and tap it now. can't say alright because I always say alright. So next up, so we've got these plates, they're the ones that get the uprights in them. So I design these up, we'll go through that a little bit more in a minute, but that's what's going to bolt to the PFC. So I've marked our center line of our PFC, I ended up cutting it down instead of waiting to get it on the saw at Tom's. I just cut it down to 1600 which is more than sufficient for the disc we're going to do. Uh, like a HG's 1530, the one for the wagon's 1410, um, they're all in that sort of range. If the car's going to be tubbed, it's going to be way shorter anyway. So, I gave a quick call to Tom, he slid under the turbo ute, and he said we've got 400 shoulder to shoulder on our cast uh, board warner. So, instead of drilling every 50 mil in here, I've left 400 bare, so we can weld uprights and weld whatever we need to. So what we've done, I've taken center 200, center, center, and I've offset 50 again. So the plan is, is to drill and tap the first one, drill and tap the second one, and then what I can do from there is we can use these things. So these are called transfer punches, for those of you who haven't seen them before. So what they are, is a shaft with a center on it. So essentially, I'm gonna have to drill these out a little bit, but that slides through there, get it upright, bang, punches off. So I've actually center punch the first four holes, which I'll drill and tap. And then what we can do is we can actually bolt the plate down and then mark the next ones along. So that should give us proper spacing between them all. So that should work nicely. All right, I'll drill them out first and then we'll keep going. Getting back into it. Oh, okay. Next step, so, drill and tap these holes. Um, I just realized the camera wasn't recording, so I'll show you how we drill and tap the next ones. But essentially it's a three mil pilot, eight and a half um, through hole, and then M10 by 1.5. So I actually use the drill to tap it. It's pretty close. Um, as we can see, plate doesn't have any movement. So we're gonna use our transfer punch. So essentially that sits down in the hole like that. Holds pretty tight, we make sure it's straight. 
Bang. Bang. And then we can also confirm, because I extended my line a little bit further. So if we have a look down the hole, we can see that that's on the line. That one is also on the line. So we'll undo it, move it across two, and then keep going. We got all our holes drilled, tapped, just ran a countersink back through them on the top just to take the top little burr off. Um, tap does create a burr. For those of you wondering, um, I used one tap, one 8.5 mil drill bit, one 3 mil drill bit, the whole job. Um, there's 48 tapped and drilled holes, so that's pretty good. Um, if you are going to use your drill to tap, like me and Tom, have both worked in workshops where you tap nothing by hand everything gets tapped with a drill um, just put your drill speed back to one and obviously turn your clutch down a little bit so when it does grab it um, doesn't snap the tap so we've got our base plates bolted on everything looks good got a little bit of runoff down this end um, not 100% sure how straight the PFC is down the edge but that won't really matter um, we can run a little bit out of square on the diff. It doesn't, it isn't as critical as people make it out to be. We will probably get it trued up. It gets trued up within a mil. So that's going to be pretty good. So we've got our base plates bolted down. We're now going to make our uprights. So here is our upright. Slides in. So they are tabbed and keyed as well. So you have seen this on like the truck chassis and stuff like that. It just helps locate everything. So that sits in nice and tight. So it's actually four pieces. So one upright, one base plate, and then two square gussets. So that keeps that, that plate, that upright, nice and square, nice and solid. It actually gives it no bending point. So if that was to be removed, our flex point's down here. With these in and stitched up the top, probably stitched down the bottom, that is then our pivot point, very close to the top. It's gonna to be extremely hard for that to actually move. So what we're gonna do is tack this one up and probably call it a night and we'll come back and hit it again tomorrow and make the other three and hope to put a diff in it tomorrow. So I'll get to it. Next day, I've come out, I've tacked everything up, 
actually bottled them all off. So we actually bolted them down to the PFC to weld them, just so they hold. And they will cool on that PFC as well. So the gusts just stitched, so I need to fully weld them. One thing I have found, um, moving into the top saddles. So the correct size, but they just need a little bit of clearance to let the tube go all the way to the top, just like that. So what I've done, I've marked them off the tangent. So what I'll do now, bolt them all together, sand them all at once. Same thing happened up in here as well. So I just gave them a bit of a sand before I welded them together. But what we'll do is we'll get the die grinder and run the die grinder around in there as well, just to get it where we need it to be. So, skipped a couple of steps with you guys, but instead of sanding these out, I ended up getting them machined. Um, we've got about 0.2 clearance, which gives us a nice tight fitment so the tube doesn't actually move, but it allows us to rotate it around, which is gonna make that welding process even easier. So, as you can see, all mounted up. So what we're gonna do now, I've got the original diff outside there. We have to go and take some measurements. We need to work out our pinion offset, left to right. Um, then we can start working out measurements here. So other things we're gonna to do today, put the studs in. There's a breather and a drain in there and some cool little jigs that I'll show you in just a second. But there it is. So that's the jig made. Checking the pinion centering. So I've just got a piece of scrap 25 mil square there, just with a big secret C grip. So pretty well gonna measure from that side, pinion center, that side, pinion center. See if it, the pinion is actually centered in these diffs or not, or in the car, and we're gonna mimic what's here already. So I went out and I measured the pinion center, and we've got a 50 mil difference in tube length. So divide that by two is 25 each side. So the original was 1450 overall. We go on to 1410 overall on the new diff. So that is Centura length. Centura is actually 1409, but 1410 will be close enough. So gives me 680 on my driver's side, 730 on my passenger side. We've just gone through on bearing end to tube and then brake end to face added them together gives us 94 mil taking a measurement in the center of 477 divide by 2 238.5 so that gives me my cut length of 30 347.5 and 397.5 so pull these tubes out we'll cut them down now once it's cut down, we're gonna use these. So I had these machined up. They sit in the caps pretty well. 30 mil internal hole. And also these ones. Which go into our Ultra 9 bearing ends. So as you can see, they're a nice tight fit. So a bit of 30 mil round bar, 30 mil threaded rod, all the way from bearing end through the third member to the other bearing end. So it should help hold it straight while we weld it. So what I'll do now is I'll cut these tubes down, so I'll do a little bit of a fix up on these saddles, and then we'll show you how to put the studs in.
to length. We put it back in the jig, gave it a quick measure minus the brake length. We're within a mil, so that's pretty good. So next job is to put our third member studs in. So all I've done is I've put the stud through, a couple of washers and a nut, and I'll run the rattle gun on it and pull it in. All right, so we've got the studs in, so pulled in nice and tight. We are missing one, that is correct. Uh, turns out the old ugga dugga gun is too much, and I actually stripped the thread, so I had to cut it off, hammer it back out. I was in this one actually, so I put one back in to make sure it was all good and happy days. So I will order another one of those this week. Um, got some other stuff to order this week so my axles and stuff but that can be put in at any stage so now we'll put the third member in with the pucks put it all together and then probably tack it up alrighty so third members in I haven't put all the nuts and bolts in so what we're gonna do now is we've got this piece of M30 threaded rod so I'll put this puck on here which goes into our bearing housing I know that they're not straight just yet so we'll clock them once it's all pushed together um, and we can do a final just check measure and get going from there so I'll jam that in now so we've got it all assembled I'm just clamp these on I'll just check my overalls um, we're two mil short, which is a mil each side, which is nearly nothing in the whole grand scheme of things, which will be fine. So from here, what we're going to do is obviously probably loosen it off, clock the bearing ends up, sort of clock the pinion a little bit to get the bearing ends at the right angle, then we'll tack it off. Um, pretty well pull it back apart then and wait for some rear suspension to come. So I have ordered rear suspension. We have decided to go full Gazard Brothers rear end in the car. Um, yeah, I was going to do it eventually, but may as well do it now while we're, we haven't painted underneath the wagon. So do it now while we wait for that to happen. But there, there we go. So yeah, I normally like to drill a hole and plug weld the tubes back but this shoulder is really short like I'm not gonna get much of a plug weld on so I don't think I will I think the fillet in here is gonna be fine if we run into any issues we can probably run a rear diff brace on it if, if required but I don't think we will should be pretty strong for what we're gonna do with it we're going okay <laughs> who's going first oh you go first and then I say my bit okay you gotta look at the camera right mm-hmm all right so that pretty well concludes this week's episode I've got it tacked up now um, I'll pull that bar back out of the center and then we'll use our ultra 9 diff jig our axle tool to measure up what length axles we need so I guess we better do a code word okay so today's code word is going to be either diff or jig you guys can put whichever one you want in the comments and we will pick somebody. Two people. We will pick two people. To send out sticker packs to. To send out sticker packs. So thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to uh, like the video and subscribe for uh, the channel. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll Bye. see you next week.